Hey guys, so in this talk, we're basically just gonna be looking at some menus. We're gonna break down a bunch of different like little situations from the games that I've come across recently. And we're going to talk a bunch about why um, they failed, what they were trying to achieve, or why they just didn't quite get there. And then we're going to look at an example of a, a good menu that actually fixes or like uh, successfully does what a bunch of these menus were trying to do. So I've prepared a bunch of like little uh, screens and slides and things here, which we'll go through. Um, yeah, should be good. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. So I guess let's just let's just jump straight into it. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was just what we're going to do in this talk really, really, really quickly. So where's me? source there okay okay so uh welcome to the talk how these menus miss the mark so in this talk we're basically going to look at some gaming experiences that i've had recently um we're going to break down some of the ui problems with the menus that the that the games had so in using these games, there were some frustrations or something that I found that was um, annoying to either use or it arrested the gameplay or something like that. We'll break down what those are. We'll talk about them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at a really, really good example. I've tried to get a few different examples of this stuff because it kind of pops up, but it's all kind of around this idea of when you're in a menu and you're getting someone to look at two different things, that's doing a comparison. And what you want to do is you want to give the person that is doing that comparison as much information as possible so that they have to do as little mental work as possible. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But to jump over to the next slide, which is just a Photoshop document because I'm such a wizard, um, what are menus and why are they used? So this is kind of focused very specifically towards games. Obviously, there's menus in a lot of things in life, and they all have kind of different purposes. But when it comes to games specifically, um, computers are really good at 3D interaction. They're really good at um, they're really good at like rendering 3D worlds and letting you explore them and do things and jump onto platforms and hit enemies and work out distance and fly through space and all that sort of stuff but a lot of the things that make this kind of interesting is interactions of data within the code and the good thing about computers is we can take things that would normally be mundane and crap in real life and we can strip that out of our experience with using systems and things like that to make the basically the boring stuff easier to manage or easier to access or completely removed from um, our experience, but still impact it um, by putting it inside a menu. So basically it's, it's interacting with all of this data in an easier sort of way. Now, as a point that kind of goes along with that, sometimes in terms of being able to do things in a 3D world, it's not the most efficient or effective way to actually approach this information. So you can think of this as like if you were comparing swords or something in your video game, you wouldn't want to have to go to a sword rack and pick up a sword and then like swing it around for a bit and be like, yeah, okay, this one is however I like. Put it back down, pick up another sword swing it around for a bit because that would be like an arduous crap process it wouldn't be fun it would be taking away from the core game loop that would all suck so instead we can put that stuff in a menu and allow you to do it really really quickly and give you a bunch of information to help you make your choices which allows you to get back to doing what basically we want you to be doing which is the core game loop which is usually like combat or platforming or something like that right so it's much easier to interact with data in a two-dimensional space which normally is a menu, right? Now, the pros of this is that it's very easy to manage a lot of data very quickly, right? So that means that like, if you've got a bunch of different things that you kind of need to flick back and forth between, it's very easy to do this all in 2D. You can think of this as something like SimCity, right? So you're managing power, you're managing water, you're managing traffic, you're managing population, you're managing grids of different things, right? And a lot of that is done in menus, Yes, there's a 3D element to putting the um, the buildings down and that kind of thing, 
but a lot of that stuff is done through menus. So you can manage a lot of that data and see a lot of that data very quickly, which leads to the second point, which is you can access a lot of data very quickly. So you can access a lot of information very easily in a two-dimensional menu, whereas in a in a um, in a three-dimensional space, normally that would suck. So again, back to the sword analogy, you can just have a readout of it's this does this much damage, it swings this quickly, it costs this much, it weighs this much. That can all just be in a menu, where instead of having to have it in a three D environment, where you might have to like go to a go to a um a shop and say how much would you give for me for this or go to a scale and say how much does it weigh or hit a bunch of things and say I think it does about this much damage. This is all very common sense stuff. It like I understand that this is the most basic ridiculous explanation of something, but it's all kind of relevant as to where we're kind of going to be getting with when we're talking about the menus. Now the cons of this kind of approach, which again I understand this is all super super obvious, but is that if you are in a menu, you likely aren't engaging in the core loop. And I say likely because there are situations where um, the entire game is in menus or something like that, right? And so uh, in games like that, so you could think of something a little bit like Civ. Civ's kind of getting there You could, and something like Adventure Capitalist. Something like that, where the entire thing is just menus. The idea is that you just click things and move back and forth between menus and the interaction between that data is the game loop. Football Manager is another good one, right? Um, but likely, if you're in a menu, so if you think about most giant AAA games, it's a 3D world, you've got some form of physical interaction, whether it's shooting or combat or jumping or flying or whatever. Um, if you're in a menu, you're probably not doing that, right? So they get in the road of the player engaging with the with the with the core loop. Maybe not as much as doing all of those things outside a menu, but they are in the road. And the other thing is that that those menus become an abstraction of what we're trying to try to work out. So we want them to be clear about what they're doing, and we want to do our best to get in, get as much information into the player as possible, so they can make their choices and get back to the core game loop. Cool. So, a little bit of background. We're going to be talking about Borderlands 2 to begin with. So, we're in the middle of COVID at the moment. I guess it's not really the middle, but um, who knows. But we're like in COVID at the moment. We've been in lockdown for a few months. I've been playing a bunch of Borderlands with one of my mates. He decided that he wanted to get into it. Played a bunch of, all of the way through the first game. Um, and we... Uh, started playing the second game with one of his other friends, and so I've been playing a ton of Borderlands. Now, Borderlands is a very menu-heavy game in the sense that you are doing a lot of comparisons between gear. You're doing a lot of comparisons between things, and so outside of the core game loop of shooting stuff and like killing enemies and doing quests, the next thing that you do the most of, and you do a lot of it, is compare gear to other gear because it's a looter shooter and therefore there's lots of gear that's popping up all over the place and you want to maximize your capabilities within your loadout and so you're doing a lot of gear comparisons back and forth between each other, right? Now, that brings us to this first interface. If you're doing a lot of comparisons between gear back and forth, you really don't want to be doing math on five different stats. And that's where this particular interface here fails. So I might just jump over to the full screen one. So let's jump over to this one. Uh, transition. Yep, cool. And then I'll just make sure that I can try and keep it away from the camera. So what's happened here is I've come up to a gun that I've found in something or other. It's a very common situation in Borderlands. And I'm now looking at this gun and there's this little kind of in-world interface that allows me to compare its stats against the stat of the gun that I have equipped. So what does this menu get right? What we're essentially doing here between these two menus. So actually, this is the gun that's sitting in the box, obviously here, this square menu. And then this is the stats of the gun that I currently have equipped. And so what is it doing right? Well, it's at least partially doing a comparison between each of these stats for us, right? Which is good. So it's saying up, it's saying down, depending on what that is, and it's comparing it against these stats here. Cool. Each one of these things has a 
color code to it as well. So green for up, red for down. Let's keep in mind for this entire chat that most of the stuff that we're talking about is going to be um, red and green. Red and green are two of the colors that the most common type of color blindness have difficulty seeing. So for those people, the red and green will look like a different shade of brown. And so they'll look very similar, which is why it's important to have an, um, a discernible shape in this case, which is an up or a down arrow so that you can tell which direction that's going without the need of the color, but the color makes it easier for most players. So it's getting all of that right. Where this piece falls down is you might do this all the time. You're doing this constantly during the game. Where it falls down is this says down, but not by how much. And this says up, which is obviously the comparison. So if that one's down, this one is up. But again, not by how much. And so where you fall into a problem here is you get to this piece of menu and you're like, okay, I want to know if this gun for each of these stats is better than this gun. And what you end up having to do is you have to, what you end up having to do is you have to go, okay, for each stat, I need to work out how much difference this is. Because as you can see, these are pretty close. So if like the fire rate was significantly better, maybe I would be happy to um, to substitute a little bit of sacrifice, a little bit of damage in order to get a better fire rate, something like that, right? And so what this ends up being is sometimes you can very easily just glance at it and be like, yeah, no, that's not, that's not interesting for me at all. But quite often you'll see something that might be like down, down, up, down, up, and this damage will be maybe like 4,885, and this one is 4,999 by 2. So you then have to go, okay, this is um, a pro this is how much less? So in this case, it's 500 less damage for 5% less accuracy. It fires slightly faster. It reloads slower even though this says 3.3 .3 and this says 2.1. Oh, right, because it's amount of time to reload. So down, less reload in this case is actually better. Um, it's the up. And then the magazine size is significantly larger. And so you have to go through that process and then you have to think about whether this is better than this. So how can we improve this um, UI piece? Essentially, you would just do the math for them, right? So here you would have, this is, well, let's not do the math exactly, but it's 5,000. So it's about um, 550 better. And so each one of these, you can sort of look at and work out exactly what the difference is. So it's 550 better in this, 4% better accuracy. It's 0.7% uh, better reload speed. It's, no, sorry, uh, fire rate. It's one second better reload speed, but it's got an extra 38 bullets sort of thing. And so now we can, without having to look down here, we can just compare between these numbers, right? And so we can say, is am I willing to take 550 extra for uh, a worse reload speed for 100 or 550 less? Blah, blah, blah. And so that would be a much better way to do it. Actually do the comparison, show them the information, because that takes out the step of having to do that math on the fly and compare back and forth. Now you might say to me, and understandably, you might say, well, that's not that hard. Just do the math. It's fine. Cool. But when you're then comparing between multiple guns, it obviously becomes difficult to then do that math on the fly every single time and keep five numbers in your um, in your brain at all times because in Borderlands you have basically on the D-pad four different guns, right? And so if you want to compare against each of those guns, you need to keep roughly 20 numbers in your mind, which is just way too much. When if you did this here, you would need to only compare against uh, the numbers that the math has already kind of worked out for you and then be like, okay, cool, this is a, a good option, but it's not as good option as the other gun. 
right? Now this gets worse when we get into this menu. So this now is saying the same thing. It's saying this guy here, which is part of our backpack, so this gun here, which is part of our backpack, is these stats against our currently equipped gun. Now where this part falls down is now it doesn't say what the currently equipped gun is, but I'm not going to dwell on that too much, obviously. Um, if you're really good at Borderlands, you could probably look over here, and you could look at which gun that you have uh, equipped on the back of your character model and say, oh, okay, so this is my assault rifle, which means this is now getting compared against my assault rifle. And then you can work out, like, this thing, I think, does about 5,000 damage, but it's an assault rifle, so it shoots. Its clip size is, like, this is one of the spin guns, so its clip size is maybe, like, 70 or something like that. And so you can look at that and be like, oh, okay, cool, well, this is an assault rifle, so these stats don't really relate. But so it doesn't say that it's going to be equipped. But when you then jump into this menu, you've got all of your guns. So you can see this is a sniper, this is a sniper, and further down here I actually have two more snipers. When you're comparing one, two, three, four, and the fifth gun, now when you're doing this math back and forth to be like, uh, this is 10,000 and this is uh, this one is 8,000, but it's slightly faster, but it, uh, it gets much, much more complex to have to do the math every single time you're looking at the gun, flicking back and forth between multiple guns and doing the math again, when it can just be displayed next to the numbers kind of thing, right? And then that kind of like comes in again when, it, when you get into the store, which is adding, so you might have like a series of guns in your, or series of shields in your menu, in your backpack, sorry, this is your backpack, and you get into here, and then you need to, um, you should get into this store, you look at this one and you're like, oh yeah, that doesn't look too bad, let's have a look at these stats, again, and so then you compare them against the one that's currently equipped, but you may have other different shields or the guns are a better example, but where you might have a sniper that shoots really, does a lot of damage but shoots really slowly, or you might have a sniper that shoots, uh, that does a, not as much damage, but it's a burst fire or it has a fire fire rate. So you then have to kind of compare back and forth against all of these numbers. And then you also have to work out if you're trying to sell something, um, potentially comparing here, Again, uh, two weapons in your inventory to then jump back into the store and then to sell. So this could all be improved by basically having that little um, little calculation done for you. Um, because otherwise what you're basically asking your players to do is constantly work out the differences between these numbers and do all that math for themselves to work out whether or not they want to swap the gun. And then taking this all back to what we said at the start, the core cool game loop for this game is shooting stuff, right? It's shooting stuff. The core cool game loop for this game is not comparing numbers against each other, right? There's no fun in comparing two different sets of numbers, right? Um, there's even less fun in comparing two different sets of numbers, but having to do the math on every single set as well. So every single time you want to look at it, right? And so what this does, obviously, is when you're looking at a gun, you might need to jump into the menu and then do a comparison against three different stats. And then you might need to um, do that math two or three times to work out whether or not you want to equip that gun. And then you want to... and then then you jump back into the gameplay, right? If you're in the middle of a fight, you can't do that. And so maybe you then lose track of which guns you've picked up that you wanted to compare against or whatever. Now, there's one other situation that makes this kind of shit. And it is the situation where, um, I think I might have spoke about it before a little bit, but it's a situation where this gun is slightly better in certain stats and slightly worse in certain stats than this gun. And so you're basically having to go 400, 5,000, 5, that's about 550. Okay, cool. So it's 550, 81.686, 4% accuracy. So it's 550 and it's 4% accuracy. Fire rate is 5.7 versus 5. So that one flies slightly faster, but it's 4% accuracy, but it's 
550 points left, and you're doing all of this math, and what you're what you what you're not you're not even actually really comparing the guns. You're just spending a few seconds looking back and forth between these stats and trying to work it out the numbers that you need to compare because when you're looking at these guns and this is kind of the important thing to keep in mind across this entire thing is when you're looking at these guns you aren't comparing this number to this number that's not what's happening that's what it seems like on the surface but it's not what you're comparing is the difference between this number and this number so what you're comparing is what you currently have equipped by what you could potentially have equipped or that's actually probably a minus sign rather than over but you know so like this one this current gun is 5000 i don't care that this gun is 4445 and we're going to talk about this in a second when we get to the good ui um but i don't care that this is 4445 i only care if this number that comes out of this is bigger than this number. So in this case, it would be minus, it would be 600. So, not 6,000, not well, be about 600. And so this gun is better damage wise. And so then this number needs to get compared against each of the other sums that you do. That is the numbers that I'm suggesting should probably be here, which is the difference between the two things that have been compared. This is the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters between these two things is the fact that there's a difference between these two numbers. It doesn't matter what this is. If this was 6, if this was 27, if this was 4, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that 27 is better than 25 in relation to how much each of these are better or worse. That's the only thing that matters. Now, you might be saying, well, Borderlands 2 is a fucking old game. Why are, we, why are we talking about that? Well, I've got a couple of examples for you because I can completely understand that. UI has come a long way in the last sort of probably 10 years whenever Borderlands 2 came out. But let's have a look at this one. So I, I know that this is a terrible screenshot, but this is the Borderlands 3 uh, UI. Now, it has definitely made some improvements in the sense that this is now coloured. The entire thing is coloured, so it's much, much easier to, at a glance, see that this stat is higher, this stat is higher, this stat is higher, this stat is higher, uh, lower, this stat is lower, this stat is lower. Easy peasy. Obviously, that's going to be converse to what's currently equipped. But they're still missing that that key piece of information, which is, what is the difference between these two? This is, yes, this is a sniper rifle, and yes, this is a pistol. Oh, well, it's an assault rifle? Maybe it's an assault rifle? Not sure. Can't really tell. Is it, does it say? No. Um, oh, it's an, I'm assuming with this sight, it's an assault rifle. So, um, you know, yes, it's a different type of gun, but what is the difference? That's what's important. And so if you had these differences here, all you would need to do is look at these and be like, am I willing to, say, take an extra 20 damage at the sacrifice of two seconds of reload time. Yes. Okay, cool. Let's swap the gun over. Um, yeah. So, again, back to that point of you're like, okay, Borderlands is an old game. Borderlands 3, well, they're just copying their UI. How about a game that came out this year, like 12 years later, that has the exact same problem? How about that? All right, I got you. So, this is the Final Fantasy VII Remake UI for a store. You can buy these items on the left here, and um, they cost this much. Obviously, you have how many you own and how many you uh, are in stock. So, in this case, in this case, obviously, you can only buy one of these because there's only one in stock. These ones, you can buy as much as you want. And then this is a comparison of how much... Uh, each stat is going to uh, how each stat is affected, and uh, what each stat will be if you were to equip this bracer. But again, what is being compared here in the exact same way is not if this is going to be seventy nine, right? For most players, they aren't going to care. 
that this is 79, right? 79 is an irrelevant number. Um, what people are going to actually care about is the relationship of each of these stats before and after, right? So in this case, in this case, for the studded bracer, if Cloud was to equip it, he'll have 143 attack, 119 uh, magic attack, he'll have 79 defense, and he'll have 42 um, magic defense. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means nothing. It literally means nothing. What's important is that he will have exactly the same attack, exactly the same magic attack. He'll have some amount of increase in defense, and he'll have some amount of decrease in magic defense. And what the comparison is here, whether this is a good option to buy, is whether or not this increase in 40 or in 10 is worth it for whether or not, like, depending on how you're playing Cloud. So, is, if, like, because at the, the way that, the way that this actually currently is, it could be an increase of, from what he's currently got equipped, to, and a decrease of 37. And in that situation, that's a shit buy, because you're only getting two defense, and you're losing 37 magic defense. That's really what you're comparing, right? You're comparing how much these are going up and down versus what they currently are, not where, not the number that they will eventually be. Yes, up and down is good because at a glance, if you're looking at, um, fuck, uh, hang on, I've screwed this up by drawing on the picture. So let's just there we go. So. Um, yes, at a glance, this is good because I can quickly look at this and be like, okay, this is down, this is down, this is down. Oh, but this, this is this is a this is a straight increase in in uh, in defense and attack. Uh, so like in defense, and I'm not losing anything for it. So in theory, that's a good buy because um, I can easily see that this is not going to have any difference on Tifa. Um, it's only a benefit, but. Every other character, I now need to do extra math somewhere else to work out whether or not this increase is worth this decrease. So it's it's missing the mark in the sense that we're not actually getting displayed the information that we need in order to make a purchase here, which means that the player then has to go and do that math themselves, which again keeps them from doing what we want them to do, which is the core game loop. So... Um, yes, and so in, in what that eventually, just for this game in particular, does is you end up swapping back and forth between two or three of these items so that you can go, okay, so that's 89, okay, and then you go up to the item that you want and you say, okay, but now it's 110. Okay, cool, so 110, 89, 110, 89, cool, what's, what's the magic? You do the same thing, you go, okay, it's a hunt, you know, and so then you, and you end up in the same situation that you do in Borderlands 12 years later, the exact same freaking problem where the thing that you're comparing and the stat doesn't matter. Um, the only matter is the difference. You're not being shown the difference, and so instead, you're working out and trying to mentally track these differences the entire time in your head to work out whether or not you should be making this purchase, right? And here's the worst part, the very shittest part about this whole situation with Final Fantasy, right? Let's say you make a purchase here. You've worked out all those differences. You've like, you've said, okay, yeah, cool. This is, I don't know what it is. It's 40 defense. Let's say the difference here is 10 attack and you only go down two magic defense, a 10 defense and you go down two magic defense and you say, yeah, okay, cool. For, for this amount of money, given that I have, in this case, I, oh, given that I have this amount of money, I think is how that works. Let's just say that. So let's say this is our amount of money that we have. This is what it costs. So for fourteen thousand, based on however much work that I've done for, to get my fourteen thousand, this item is going to cost me three thousand two hundred. Which, however much that works out to be worth, depending on again, this depends on the game. It's very specific. Um, maybe this was only like three minutes worth of work, and so that's super cheap. Maybe this is like twenty hours worth of work, and so this is actually pretty expensive. Um, maybe these stat increases are like maybe 40 defenses and no defense and makes almost no difference. So this is ridiculous. It all depends on the game. But I've done however much work to get this much money. 
I therefore have this much that is going to be taken away from that amount, and I will get the benefit of 10 increase in defense for Cloud, but he will lose 2 magic defense. Is that a valuable choice for me? Right? And so you go through, you do all that, you say yes. You go to equip it in the menu. You ready? You ready for this one? You go in. This is a talisman. It's a different thing. I understand. You go in. You're like, I'm going to equip this. They're already doing it. In the game is exactly what we were just fucking talking about. And they understand that the that it needs to be in there and it's a valuable thing to have in there. It's in the game. So in this UI... Again, same fucking problem. Uh, uh, Z. Z. Am I going to be able to get this thing back? Yes, oh, I did it again. Same problem. Hang on. Yeah. So they understand that now when you get into this menu, it's worth comparing these stats and letting you know, well, this is going to go up six attack. But for that six attack, you're going to get two magic defense. You're going to sacrifice three strength, but for that three strength, you're also going to get two spirit. And so then you can compare these numbers and you can say, okay, cool. So this is essentially buffing a magical character and reducing a physical attack character, right? So they understand that this shit's important. It's just not in the fucking UI. And my guess is that's just because this UI is already pretty cluttered. And so the form of this UI has taken preference over the function of this UI, right? It's nicer to not have an extra potentially, you know, I don't think it would ever get into three-digit numbers in, in this game, but let's just say three-digit numbers, right? So it's nicer to not have to add an extra 12 numbers in here in order to be able to display the information that you need to display. Um, and so instead, we just change the numbers that exist and tell you whether or not they nebulously go up or down, right? So it's my guess is that this is just purely like a space saving uh form over actual function uh thing to make the UI look much nicer and instead the player has to do like a ton more work. So now the next thing I want to talk about is maybe okay cool this is something that you've only mentioned in regards to inventories. Um there's tons of other menus in games, blah, blah, blah. Um, it seems to be that you're just nitpicking on something something specific. Well, fair point. Let's talk about another situation. Now, this is a mock-up. I very quickly put this together just before the talk because I couldn't uh, didn't have time to go and find an actual example. But I'm sure you guys have all come across this. Again, what we're doing is we're doing a comparison, right? Any time where we're making a purchase or we're looking at two things or we're having to make a decision, we're doing a comparison. It's a comparison whether that's on value, whether that's on time, whether that's on something. It's a comparison, right? And so the most effective way that we can, can display that, that comparison is by basically just putting the exact thing that you're comparing next to the thing that you're comparing it against. Okay, that's the easiest way we can, we can do it. And that is where these numbers here succeed and where these numbers here fail because these numbers are not putting the thing that we're actually comparing next to each other. It's, it's adding an extra step in there, which is the math. And then you can compare the things that you need, right? So, in a different situation, I'm sure we've all been across a situation like this. You come into a game. I'll just turn the dialogue box for a second. So, you come into a game with something like that. You have a character, blah, blah, blah. You get into a situation. This dude says you need to spend some money or make a purchase or something in order to proceed. You're like, okay, cool, whatever. You get into that dialogue, and it looks like this. Now, this is usually because, obviously, it's a it's a one-off kind of a random thing in the world. 
um, as opposed to something that's had a bit more consideration like a shop window that would actually have a bit more time put into it to make sure that it has everything you want. Now, you might think here, oh, well, you're just making a purchase. Are you going to spend 5,000 gold to go into uh, the castle? But you're not. It's the same thing that we had before. It's a comparison between this amount of gold and how much gold you have and whether or not that is valuable or whether or not um, you want to make that decision based on those two options, right? So here, by doing it like this, saying, would you like to bribe the guard Here's five, for 5,000 gold, you're, you're leaving out one of the key things that the character or the, or the, the player needs in order to make that decision. Obviously, I understand that in some situations you, there will be no option other than spending 5,000 gold. But maybe in a game that has multiple pathways or you can think about like a stealth game or something like that um, or something like Fallout even where you get into New Vegas, you can either bribe the guard or you can basically show the guard that you have a ton of money or you can uh, you can like uh, charisma through, I believe, the guard or there's a couple of other, or you can just shoot them however you want to actually get in there. Um this is a value buy against however much time and effort and money and gear and resources it's going to take to do the other options. But we don't have the other thing to compare. And so what normally you will end up doing in this situation is you'll say, no, you'll go into your inventory. You'll look at how much gold you have and then you'll go back into this menu and then you go, yes, right? Which is a waste of time. It's a completely dumb and so whenever you're asking like the player to make a purchase or do a comparison or whatever, you should always have what they're comparing against, right? So it should have something like this, the wallet, how much is in your wallet? And so now I can say, okay, I have spent however much time, however much energy, however much effort, however much, um, yeah. Um, I was going to say something along the lines of <laughs> however much, um, uh, like if you spent 50% of the game and you've got 50,000, maybe in, for the rest of the game, you can expect to get another 100,000. Does that mean that this is too much? Anyway, you spent however much time getting 50,000 gold is 5,000 gold of this amount worth it. And then if you wanted to be, this is a, another step on top of that. But if you wanted to, you could somehow do that math again for them. So it would be the same thing as Borderlands. So you're not actually comparing um, the two numbers against each other. You're comparing the difference. So 5,000 would leave the player with 45,000. I know that you can't really see that very well. But um, yeah, so you would do the math and say, okay, this is how much you have, this is how much you're losing from it, and this is what you'll be left over with. And so now you can say, I have 50. If I'm left with 45, am I happy with what I'm buying, which in this case is bribing the guard to get into the castle, right? That's that comparison that's happening, which is actually what you're doing with your time. Cool. What does a good UI look like? So to wrap this up, let's look at something that actually looks like a good UI. The Witcher 3. I've actually been really, really impressed with how good these Witcher um, dialogue boxes are. And considering how um, janky is probably the word, how janky some of the stuff in The Witcher is because of just the sheer size and the period at which point uh, CD Projekt Red was making this game, some of the stuff in The Witcher is really, really good. So, um, how is this different from our Borderlands thing? Well, you actually have... The numbers but you also so this is what the stat of each of this so this is redanian halberdier armor this is what i currently have selected right and i'm comparing it to what i have equipped which is the not going to try and say that hinders fjall heavy armor i guess i am going to try and say it um and this is this is its stats right so you can compare the stats by doing the math if you want to but why would you do that when uh, let me just actually add another thing. There we go. Why would you do that when they're doing it for you, right? So each of these stats is being compared against the other stat, right? So if you were to equip this, right, you can look at each piece of armor individually and all that you need is this. That's all that you need. Now, if you wanted to, you could compare this 
versus this. And the reason that you would have to do that is, um, so here you can see this is adding vitality. This doesn't have vitality. So the only other thing that you could do to improve this is you would probably say um, you would list out on each side. So this would have vitality. Um, so this might say vitality and then it would say um, zero. Um, which would be even, right? So like it's it's comparing against the things that are on the other one as well. Um, so you have two lists of every single stat and then you would only ever need to actually look at one side of this, right? So you would say like up 42 vitality, but down 20% piercing, down 20, 10% bludgeon, down 15% resistance. Um, and as you can probably see, if you've been looking at this, you don't even actually look at these numbers. You, you never look at them, which kind of is what I was saying before about how those numbers are not important. You don't look at them. They're not important. What's important is the difference. You only ever look at these numbers, right? And you compare them against the things over here that are green. And in, and in that situation that we just talked about, if you listed out everything, then you, all you would need is one of these columns of numbers. So you can say in this situation, let's get that going to work every time. Yeah, so in this situation, you can obviously say, like, piercing damage is better, bludgeoning damage is better. Um, this one has res resistance to poisoning. This one has better slashing damage. This one has resistance to elemental damage. What does it have over here? That's down, that's down, that's down. We would get more vitality, but that's because this one doesn't have vitality. You do actually have to do that comparison there. Um, you have to be like, does this have vitality? No. Okay, so that's why that's 42. And then this one, resistance to damage from monsters, so 3%. And then again, you have to go over here and be like, mm, no. And so you can basically say, all green, this is better armor in every way except for these two stats. Is this extra stats worth these, um, like, worth losing those stats? Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Great piece of kit, right? And like I said before, you end up not even actually looking at the stats of the armor itself. You only look at the difference, right? It doesn't matter that this is 177 and 145. It's 32 better. Again, we look at the um we can have a quick look at the uh we can have a quick look at the actual stats themselves. So in this case it does have both the down arrow we have the amount of difference. We have the the in this case the item. So this is an integer. This is a percentage. We have the percentage sign. We have negative or positive, and then we have the up or down arrow. I think we already mentioned that. And the color coding, right? So there's it's very very easy to glance at this and just say that's all green, right? There's a couple of green things over here which are resistance to monster damage and vitality. It's only a little bit of resistance to monster damage and vitality is 42. My current vitality is 500. Oh, 5,500, so that's basically nothing, and so it's probably better to just stick with this armor. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. N not once was I like, that's 40, but that's 20. So if 20 is bigger than 40, not once, right? You're only ever looking at the differences, which was my point from before. And The Witcher keeps up. It's awesome UI as well. In, is this a different one? Oh, so basically I just wanted to say if, if there's no difference between the two then you end up with this, which is uh, the same thing. So if we think about colorblind peeps, everything looks brown. We have a indicator that dictates that there is no change, and then we just display that no change. And uh, we have a color that represents the difference between nothing changing, something increasing, and something, something increasing, and something decreasing. Easy peasy, right? Really, 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 really good UI. Really, really good UI. Again, the only thing that you could probably do is say um, anything that extra that's being compared is listed on both sides so that you can see that you would lose 400 vitality because, and that would look something like, let's just say it's 400 vitality. It would look like this. So you're losing 400 vitality. How much is that? All of it, right? So you could just compare those two numbers. Yeah, that's all of it. Okay, sweet. Um, yep. And so then the last thing I wanted to talk about was this, which is the crafting menu. And so even in the crafting menu, 
they're doing a lot of work to actually help you not have to do that math yourself, right? So you get in here, we're looking, we want to, we want to make this superior devil's puffball. We've got these ingredients is what's required. You can easily see which ones we don't have. So we don't have these ones. They're red. They have a red number. They have obviously the amount as well. Um, and we have all of these things and the same thing. It says exactly how many we have out of how many we need. And it's color differentiated both in the number by green, that's the amount that we need, and the background. Uh, you know, red is the ones that we don't have. Let's draw focus to that, whereas the other ones have no background because it's fine. We have enough of what we need to be able to make this stuff. And then over here we have, obviously, the benefits as well. Um, let's just quickly pull up one more thing. And then we might play some Ghost of Tsushima. Um, where would I have put it? Where would I? Have put it? One. This one. This one. Uh, yeah. So. Same thing here, we'll just do it with the mouse for now, we don't need to do it in Photoshop. Um, so, same thing, this is a, uh, a sword. The only thing that kind of sucks here is it doesn't really tell you what your, um, what you're comparing against and what those stats are, and there doesn't seem to be a compare option down here. But again, it's telling you, if you were to make this blacksmith journeyman sword, oh, Oh, sorry, that, that's the type of... If you were to make this Arbitrator Steel Sword, so you know you're, at, in this case, you're at least comparing it against your Steel Sword because Geralt only has a Steel and a Silver Sword, you only have the one of each, but that's the Equip Sword. You're going to have 79 less attack, but you're going to have better Critical, you're going to have better Stagger, you're going to have better Dismember, but you're going to lose Armor Piercing. And this kind of UI is sort of what I was talking about before, right? So it's going to say plus zero Armor Piercing, which is down 27, right? So now... I don't even need to compare the two windows because I can see that the other sword that I have has armor piercing, but I'm going to lose it all because this has 0% armor piercing. But it does have better chance to dismember, better chance to stagger, better chance to critical hit, but overall, the damage is less as well, right? So I can look at just this window, just this set of stats, and I can decide whether or not I want to make that sword choice. And again, it's all about getting back into the core loop. If we want to run around and kill monsters and do quests and solve mysteries as Geralt, the last thing that we want to be doing is math to work out whether or not this sword is better. And that's my talk, I guess. Cool. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube later, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the, hit the bell. Um, these talks I'm going to do, try and do every Saturday on Twitch. So, uh, can head over to my Twitch at the Michael Cave. It'll be on screen now, um, and you can come uh, sit in the chat, hang out, talk crap, um, ask questions, um, tell me when I'm wrong, all those cool things. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.